All right, we're gonna look at the last one. This one's called Inside the World of The Last of Us Part Two, but we will see. So far, it sounds good, brother. Boy, it sounds so good. They it, it, they just rolling it off the tongue real smooth, real smooth. Now, if it's true, it's remain to be, will, will remain to be seen, but. <clears throat> Neil, you, 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 you putting me to bed, baby. You tucking me in. So, hopefully, uh, you ain't whispering sweet nothings. Hopefully, they're sweet somethings. Let's take a look at this. Inside the world, blah, 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 part two, blah, blah, blah. The world of The Last of Us is dangerous. What? Unless Man. You're living in a protected area there is something lethal around every corner. You see Once Neil you venture out of your home, <laughs> you're in danger. And where we're taking the story and where we're taking Ellie is like each step of the way, she's putting herself in more and more danger to bring these people to justice. I would say that the world. You see, boy, they all know they're shaking. The word is bigger. You can tell they're trying hard not to say the plot or because they're trying to be really secretive about this right i don't know if you caught that right because they, they they've had all these uh 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 restrictions on what the reviewers and whatnot can say and talk about and show but uh uh i don't know if you could tell that's a really bad part to stop that on i'm sorry about that brother but uh it is kind of funny looking uh but you could tell like the way And the shaking of the leg and uh, all that kind of stuff. Boy, they they really don't want to give anything away. I hear you, brother. I hear you. And The Last of Us Part 1. Both in scale and the amount of physical space that exists for you to explore, for you to encounter other people. Yeah, this route has its perks. Our hope is to make every corner a challenge, make every decision hard for Ellie. And so we do that not just in the gameplay you experience, but also in the level design. So part of that is making certain experiences really hostile, be it through weather or through rivers or, or craggy cliffs or slick snow. You mean like reality? It in terms of how blind the player is. Like, what can they see? How safe do you feel? Can you see a threat coming around the corner? Yeah. You never know if the bullets in your gun are gonna be enough. You never know if you can stop and bandage your arm. You can never fully breathe. And we want you to be in alignment with Ellie, who can never fully breathe when she experiences this trauma. For Jackson specifically, we wanted to make it feel- Who is Jackson? Like a very close-knit oh, kind of community oh. that's focused on the family. Community focused on sustainable ways of living. I obviously have the hydroelectric dam generator that's powering the town, so we have- Family is very know, important. Electricity yeah. in Jackson, which is not something that maybe players would expect- Just in case you didn't know. World. But given that we're further in time, we wanted to show that there are certain people dedicated in the world to rebuilding a life that doesn't revolve around killing people and, and scavenging. But that is the reality of current As circumstances. You walk around the town, you can hear kids laughing. You could see um, people going into restaurants and eating. And it's a very kind of tranquil town. Now, we know there's all these horrible things happening outside the walls, but they've been able to. Well, the concept art is on of, point. Of this town. Jackson, in many ways, represents what is at stake for our characters a, a life of peace and relative comfort, uh, a life where you can fall in love, a place where children can play and it's okay. And I think- Like the village. Know, when we were looking at building out you Jackson, that movie? it's like, okay, how many of those moments can we represent? What's awesome about the world of The Last of Us is it shows just how precious the things that we take for granted in our everyday lives, how precious those things really are. Seattle compared to Jackson is uh, very different. It's more of a war zone, I would say. Well, yeah, it's part a of city. The interesting thing with there's Seattle a whole bunch more the folks. Pacific Northwest is that there's all this rain, more place to hide, so on and so forth, and wildlife, and it's this very lush area that 
if someone were to sell down, it'd be a pretty good place to sell down just as far as the kind of fruit you can scavenge, the animals. That being said, in the city, okay, there would be tons of people. Tons of people. Don't be wrong, 25 years afterward, maybe not so many. Uh, I, I agree. But uh, it wouldn't be a, a, a group of 10, 15, you know, every block. It would be, you know, groups of 40 or 50, right? They would have that bad boy on lock. They would have that bad boy on lock. And, brother, uh, human beings can be, cr and especially at that time, like, uh, what was that uh, uh, show, uh, The Walking Dead, where they went into that city and they were using people as a... Uh, 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 food, Ryan. Uh, that, that's what would happen. That's 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 exactly what would happen, and you know it, right? If if you didn't have any sort of livestock, which I think if, after a certain period of time, I mean, somebody's got to go out and get a cow or two so they could start, you know, <laughs> making some livestock. But if that didn't happen, they would just have certain communities of people who uh, procreate, and then then uh, and that's what they would eat. in that sort of scenario. You can hunt, and then because it is so lush, because it is so um, teeming with resources, is why there are multiple factions trying to fight over those resources. <laughs> One faction you run into in Seattle is the Washington Liberation Front. When the outbreak happened, the military took some pretty drastic actions and quarantined parts of the country. And this was their way of protecting the population has survived this horrendous outbreak. And because of that, it led to rise of these resistance groups. And in the first game, we saw the Fireflies. And we heard about other groups. And in this game, we get to see, here's another group that rose called the Washington Liberation Front that was able to defeat the army and thereby take over a lot of their equipment. And they're this very militaristic faction. So they didn't like the military. They beat the military and, at the and then same became time, the military the seraphites but that's really how it happens too group that also came up out of the outbreak that believed that the pandemic came because of sin they're trying to reset the world and return it to a better place than it was and the last of us almost any group that has survived this long has to be dangerous yeah um, if you're not dangerous oh, yeah. you're not going to survive you're going to become someone's victim and the two factions you run into are both very dangerous the wlf has a lot of military equipment that they're able to use to defend the area and they have large but fun fact uh those type of groups though they are very dangerous in their eyes they're the good guys that's the thing is that uh it's all about perspective because, you know, and it's the way it is around here. Everybody thinks they're the good guys. Everybody thinks that it, no matter how bad or how wrong the actions that they take, right? We're the good guys. We're the good guys. The means justify the ends. Well, they do if you the one doing them. So, large numbers, whereas the Seraphites are very quiet and stealthy and able to use the large amount of foliage to their advantage and they fight more in this kind of guerrilla warfare. How you deal with them is gonna be different because they have different language, they have different communication style. The scars will whistle to each other with this different language. And they have some of the stuff that you have. You have a bone arrow, they can hit you with arrows and impale you and you have to pull the arrow out. Yeah, they uh, have. I'm, I'm sorry, we got to talk about that. Uh, uh, it, unless they just got like, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I just, I'm trying to find some of my arrows. All right, so now I'm going to show you something. You saw Ellie pull that arrow out of her? Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. okay, all right. Now yeah, I get it, right, I mean, it's just a game. But, if, if this is a, a an arrow tip, this is a practice tip, right? This is generally what you practice with arrows. That way you can pull it out of the target relatively easily, right? Now, here's a, a another type of arrow 
tip, right? And uh, this one isn't super common, but it's the only one that I could find that could prove what I'm trying to say, right? So when it hits, let me pull this down. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Right? It sort of does this uh, spreading action here. I don't know if you can see that, but once that goes inside of you, and most of them don't have this sort of action like that, right? Most of them, it's, the blade literally goes up to here. So it's like a, a, a fishing hook, right? Once it's inside of you, once you get that second uh, 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 spike inside of you, in order to get it out, you have to tear the flesh out, right? And if you see how big that is, brother, for her to tear that out of her arm, oh boy, that's like guaranteed death. Uh, sew that up. Sew that up. I don't think you are. Especially in the field. Brother, you would have a hole inside of you like that. It would just tear the flesh all open. It would be, boy, you would be garbage afterwards. But that being said, this is a game. So, I mean, you know, stop being so critical. Big sledgehammers and melee weapons. The WLF, they have trained dogs that will sniff and attack you. Dogs are a new level of threat that Ellie hasn't had to negotiate before, and hopefully they create a new complicated choice for the player. We saw in them an opportunity to, to challenge people's perceptions of what a combat setup can be. Yeah. We wanted to find really hard choices. The dogs themselves have names. They're called out by their owners. We wanted every setup to be challenging. Yeah, you gotta put them down. Because oh, like once they get a hold of you, they, they don't let go. How many do you think it would take to bring down a moose? Infected are still a threat in this world. Also, we that's wanted a to small take first moose. our basic classes that we had in the first game and say, okay, how do we, what's different about them now? So we'll have scenarios where way more runners, like we can have hordes sometimes of runners coming after you and it might yeah, be about yeah. just escaping because the odds are just overwhelming. You know, this thing just keeps mutating. There's, there's certain evolutions of infected that you haven't seen before, certain new classes. There's the shamblers, which kind of have these exploding acid clouds. Uh, when you get near them. You're running down a hallway and you have to suddenly make a decision like, oh, do I want to take the damage and go through this cloud or find some other route or go back the way I came? And it kind of forces you to on the fly kind of make new decisions about how Run you and gun. deal with uh, the threat behind you or potentially in front of you. Yeah, yeah. So again, it's Good. about how do we make fighting against infected intelligence. So when yeah. you come on a space, you're listening to audio cues because different classes will make different sounds. If you just go in guns blazing and throw caution in the wind, you could easily get overwhelmed and regret that strategy. That level of uncertainty and instability is something our characters have to carry with them every day as they go out into the world to protect the people they love most. And that threat is banging on their door every day. I really hope you make it. That's real! That's real! And it's not easy. It's not easy. Like the other game, I'm, I, at least for me, number one was just too easy, man. You made it. You made it too easy. There weren't enough of them, right? Or, or uh, uh, I mean, there really wasn't a whole lot of, you know, fighting scenarios. You know what I mean? It was just, uh, yeah. I mean, I dude, as I went through like the last area. Uh, and I found out it was the end of the game. I was like, dang, man, that, that was way too easy. Way too easy. Uh, but yeah, man, if they gonna make this one hard, make it hard, brother. That's right. I want, I, boy, I want to feel good about beating this game. If it, they said it's 25, 30 hours, right? Uh, yeah, I want to, I, I want to, I, boy, I, I want to beg for this game to end. Like, my God, my God. God, can these people please stop killing me? Please, I want to, uh, dude. I want to break three controllers. It's so hard. But that, uh, that's just me, right? I don't know. How about you? You like the easy games, right? Let me know. Comments below. Ha ba 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 ba. Like and subscribe, right? Bell. Other stuff. Didn't like it? You're your own person. Do what you want to do, right? Hmm.
We'll see you later.